Good morning, social media. It's me, Katina Kennedy, nurse practitioner, back just to give you some health information for today. Um, this has been heavy on my mind, and I really want to um, educate you all on some of the symptoms and signs that you may experience when you do encounter this specific diagnosis. Um, it's called depression. Actually, I'm going to give you like a brief synopsis of just depression and anxiety together. Because when you have depression, sometimes you have anxiety. You can have a mixture of both. Um, one may not be as bad as the other. However, persons usually exhibit both signs and symptoms of both diseases. Uh, so let's just talk about depression. Uh, very, very common uh, dis disorder. It happens to everyone. It's just that um, Caucasians or other races, they actually seek help. They seek attention faster than African Americans. You know, we kind of um, try to hide it or we say, oh, we're just gonna, you know, just pray about it. And, you know, and, and when things don't get better, you know, things can t turn out worse. So depression happens to everyone. Yes, everyone. It's just a matter of who seeks help. Okay, who seeks help. Uh, so if you all of a sudden just, you know, start experiencing some feeling low, feeling down, always sleeping, not as energetic, you're not into the activities that you used to be into, um, um, you're, you're achy all over. And again, this may not be all the symptoms you experience, but you could ex ex experience just one or two of these symptoms. Um, but those are some signs of depression. Now, as far as anxiety, if you, you know, your heart rate kind of goes up when you're around certain things or usually patients, people have social anxiety, but heart rate uh, increases, uh, nervousness, you get really nervous, um, sometimes inability to concentrate, you can't focus, you start one task and then you can't finish it, you start another one, uh, difficulty sleeping with anxiety may occur, your mind is constantly worrying, it's wandering, you're thinking about so many different things you have to do. That those are some symptoms of anxiety, all right? Those are symptoms, and you have to get them addressed because, especially de dealing with anxiety, they affect us physically. I've had a lot of patients that have gone to the emergency room because their anxiety got out of control and it affected them physically in which they had what they call a panic attack. And that's when they had to go to the emergency room. When you have a panic attack, uh, it, it feels like you're having a heart attack, like chest pressure, chest heaviness, can't stop crying, difficulty breathing, feels like just a lot of pressure, heaviness on your chest. Um, the blood pressure may go up. You may start to cry. Diaphoretic, which is sweating, um, may occur. You just can't. Your heart rate is going. You can't calm down. Everything is increased. Your nervous system is increased in your body. And so in that case, some people um, go to the emergency room. So it's important to get your anxiety under control so that it won't affect you too much physically um, when it turns into a panic attack and then when it comes to depression if you experience a lot of people they say oh I'm kind of down I'm just and depression can come at if any time it can be situational like if you had a relationship problems most people recover from that you know just from simple exercises and things like that but sometimes some people can't recover from that um, but it can be situational a death of someone relationship um, job loss or, you know, just anything like that. And then sometimes it's internal. Sometimes I have a lot of patients, they they say they're not stressed, they feel great, they're happy at home, and, you know, they experience, they experience they, these symptoms. So depression and anxiety can be caused by external causes, things on the outside, or just internal, which is a chemical imbalance, an imbalance between the uh, serotonin levels in the brain. Uh, so, uh, again, I review some of those signs and symptoms. Depression, feeling low, down, blue, sad, uh, sleeping for too long or difficulty sleeping, sleeping all day, just tired, lack of interest in activities, um, achiness. Some people start to have complaints, physical complaints. Um, and as far as uh, anxiety, so that's depression. And then as far as anxiety, it's so important that you treat that because uh, that's when your nervous system is on overboard, okay? It's, it's fast. So you may experience a lot of um, difficulty concentrating, uh, the inability to, to, to complete a task, uh, 
um, just nervousness, not settled, your mind constantly worrying. Also, you may encounter difficulty sleeping. You may be able to fall asleep, but then you'll wake up and you can't go back to sleep because your mind is wandering. Um, so those are just pay attention to those signs and symptoms of anxiety and depression. And um, I, I, I challenge you to get help. Okay, go and talk to someone. Speak to your start with your healthcare provider. Okay, your nurse practitioner or your doctor. And then they may send you to a counselor. That's where your psychologist comes in, your mental health counselor. And sometimes you'll start with therapy, behavior therapy. They give you excellent strategies. There's nothing wrong in speaking to a psychologist. Nothing wrong with speaking to a counselor. So important. A lot of times that helps you get over your depression or anxiety. Or it just helps you kind of maintain it. Uh, so speak speak to your health care provider first. Go see a psychologist, all right, a counselor. Go and speak with them because they give you great strategies to implement in your daily activity. Also, research shows that exercise helps uh, staying away from a lot of caffeine, a lot of fatty foods, greasy foods help as well. Um, and then if it's not under control just through those type of interventions, they call them non-pharmacological interventions, meaning without medication. Uh, a lot of times yoga, relaxation, meditation, just things like that to help you. But sometimes it's too much for the body. That's what anxiety and depression, it becomes too much for the body to handle and your body starts to exhibit physical symptoms and it really can affect you physically and mentally. So if you can't control it, then medication, all right? A lot of people, they're like, oh, I don't want to go on medication, but sometimes you need the medication. You can see a psychiatrist or your healthcare provider. I prescribe uh, medications for you know just mild to moderate type of anxiety or depression and then once it gets out of hand um, like a severe depression or anxiety I send them to the psychiatrist who then gives them a, a good concoction of medication to help you know kind of control and stabilize the patient and again um, uh, seek help it's important because a lot of people say oh I'm just down but at one time it's it's one day because just imagine if you're having a bad day and you know, you're already depressed, and then something else happens, bam, and it hits you, you start to feel really low. At that time, at that moment, you can contemplate suicide. Now, before, you've been down, you were depressed, yeah, but you didn't think about suicide. That's not on your mind. You have your kids, you have your family. You're not thinking about that, but again, we don't think about it, okay? It happens. It just happens. There's no pre-warning to, you know, well, it is, but with the patient to the suicide. I have a lot of patients say, oh, I know I wouldn't kill myself. I wouldn't think about doing that. I'm feeling down, but I'm depressed, but I'm not thinking about suicide. I see them the next week. Uh, somebody died in their family or they broke up with their significant other. And guess what? They're bottom. They're, they're, they're really, really low. They're bottom out. And they come in and... I rate their mood and they're like a zero. They want to kill themselves. So at that time, that's when I'll have to, you know, admit them to a hospital to at least get them stabilized and make sure that they're secure and don't harm themselves or others. So again, um, it, it, this is heavy on my mind because I have a lot of African Americans that's trying to deal with this themselves and there's so much help out there. You don't have to start on medication right away. Just speaking with the counselor, your psychologist, your church counselor. We have a great one at our church, um, Reverend Lori Morton. She's excellent at my olive. Uh, so just speak with anyone. You know, we'll speak with a professional, I shall say. Um, and then, of course, if that don't help, sometimes, like I said, it's too overwhelming for the body that you will need actual medication. And that's okay because, because it may just be for a year or two or six months, but at least to get you stable and to make you feel comfortable so that you can have a brighter day, so that you, you, you won't be angry, angry, short-tempered, being nasty, changing your mood all of a sudden and those symptoms, those are signs of anxiety. Yes, anxiety or depression. So, um, you know, if you notice that you've always been mild-mannered and, you know, now you're short-tempered, you have no patience, you're angry all the time, you're snapping at everyone. And I usually see those symptoms during um, what they call perimenopausal when patients, my older patients are going through the change, okay, when, it's, when they're skipping their periods, menopause basically. 
Uh, so I do see an increase in those behaviors, anxiety, depression, uh, the mood changes during perimenopausal time. Uh, so again, get help. Don't ignore it. It affects us physically. It affects us mentally. Start with your healthcare provider. See a psychologist, counselor, and then if that doesn't help, you'll see you'll get medication to start. Okay, and then of course you always want to do your exercising. Uh, that always helps. The yoga, relaxation, meditation, massage therapy helps as well. All right, so I'll cut it short. I can talk on and on and on about anxiety, depression, but pay specifically attention to those signs and symptoms that I mentioned. And if you exhibit exhibit any of those, make sure you go seek help. Go see your health care provider. Until next time, social media, Katina Kennedy, nurse practitioner. Enjoy your day.